grab yourself a shovel and a hard hat, because things are going to get dirty when we meet the super scoopers of the natural world. We're counting down the top 10 most extreme diggers in the animal kingdom to find out just who creates the fanciest excavations. Discover if there really is light at the end of the tunnel when diggers are taken to the most extreme. Earth is a planet of extremes. Extreme places and extreme animals. But some animals are more extreme than others. Join us as we count down to find the most unusual, the most extraordinary, the most extreme. In 1864, Jules Verne wrote a story about the most extreme human diggers the world had ever seen. Unthinkable, but it must be true. A man took some tools and went where no human being had ever set foot, alone. Went into the interior of the earth. While we now know that it's impossible to walk into the center of the earth, it is true that deep underground there are strange worlds, created by even stranger creatures. We're digging deep to expose those animals that are experts at burrowing. Our countdown begin, begin, crawl through simple tunnels, and expands into vast underground labyrinths. We'll meet diggers that scrap, scra bite, bash, or chew their way through a range of different materials, since not all tunnels are built underground. In fact, fa some animals like burrowing into us. An adult human is covered in nearly two square meters of skin, which is a gold mine for our first contender. It's a parasite, strong jaws, sharp spines, no eyes, and eight legs. It's guaranteed to make your flesh crawl. The size of a speck of dust, it lives in a simple tunnel excavated in the outer layer of our skin. skin. Meet the scabies mites. Mite. It digs into our skin using its razor sharp jaws and then spews out enzymes that dissolve our flesh. The female's burrow is a nursery for her babies until they're ready to head to the surface to mate before starting tunnels of their own. And by then, you'll be painfully aware that you're playing host to a diabolical digger. This rash is an allergic reaction to the scabies mites waste products. But the thing that really gets under your skin is an infuriating itch. You can pass on scabies simply by touching another person. So it's no wonder that each year more than 300 million people are scratching themselves silly. The scabies mite may be the smallest digger in the countdown, but it moves at about the same speed as one of the world's biggest machines. This is the bucket wheel excavator the largest self-propelled machine on land. It moves more earth more quickly than any machine ever built. In an average day, the bucket wheel excavator shifts over 18,000 cubic meters of earth, 
Try shifting the same amount of dirt in a day with a shovel and you'd need 40,000 people. This extreme digger works in the coal fields of Germany. It continuously chews away the top layers of earth to access the dark coal seams below. It takes only five people to control the 13,000 ton monster as it crawls along at a half a kilometer an hour. The scabies might also creep slowly under the surface of our body, tunneling through three millimeters of skin a week. And while its simple burrow can drive us crazy, we should think ourselves lucky that this mite doesn't dig one of the complex caverns that we'll see later in the countdown. There's nothing like a crumbling clay cliff to make life difficult for diggers. While this fossil hunter has the luxury of being suspended from a safety harness attached to a long rope, our next contender has to find a way to dig a hole in, in air. In sub-Saharan Africa, sandstone riverbanks are prime real estate for most unusual digger. Flying in to number nine in the countdown is the Carmen Bee Eater. It's most famous for eating bees, but it also digs holes, lots of holes. These colorful birds nest together in colonies they can have as many as 5,000 burrows tunneled into the cliff face. The Carmen Bee Eater is number nine in the countdown because its burrow is more than just a simple hole in the wall. Just inside the entrance is a large ridge to stop the kids from accidentally tumbling outside. The actual nest chamber can be set over two meters into the baked sandstone cliff. But each year, floodwaters destroy these riverside residences. So every summer, a new hole has to be dug in the sheer faces. And to get it started, the Carmen Bee Eater uses its head. The birds make an initial indentation by flying head first into the cliff. Then, once they've made a perch, they can start burrowing. Two of their toes are fused at the base and act like little shovels. One skeeter of cliff can be home to 70 birds, so competition is fierce. However, Carmen bee eaters are not the only diggers that have been found in riverbanks. High above the Arctic Circle, it's still possible to come across evidence of what was once thought to be the biggest burrowing animal in the world. Four hundred years ago, a tusk like this was a terrifying sight especially when it was attached to the frozen remains of a five-ton monster. Back then, a book by the Chinese emperor Kung Zi described the strange animals that were found buried in riverbanks of northern China and Siberia. The emperor called them gigantic rodents that used their tusks to create underground tunnels. The freshness of the meat from carcasses preserved by permafrost led him to believe that the beasts must have died when they burst through into the light. The 
ancient Siberians called them mammut, or earth moles. We can still see their remains today in museums around the world. Only now we call them mammoths. Herds of these hairy elephants roamed the northern hemisphere during the Ice Age. Some stood four and a half meters tall and were armed with tusks that could be five meters long. Today we know that these mighty creatures lived very much on the surface of the land and that their tusks were not meant for digging tunnels. However, if they died close to water, there was a chance that their bodies could have been covered in layers of sediment. And this is what fooled the ancient Chinese emperor. We get to see not the tunnels, but the graves of these gigantic earth moles, thanks to the erosion of rivers, or the painstaking work of paleontologists. Bee eaters, however, are very much alive in their river bank. And if their digging skills are to scratch, they'll stay that way, even when a monitor lizard comes calling. This formidable hunter digs using huge claws, and its slender body can squeeze into tight tunnels. However, a bombardment of sharp beaks and an extra long tunnel prove too much for even a persistent predator. They may have helped win this battle, but the Carmen Bee Eater's simple burrows can't compete with the complex excavations coming up in the countdown. So far, we've barely scratched the surface in our search for extreme diggers. Still to come are monsters that really do drag their victims down to their doom. And later, what hammerhead has a passion for smashing? The next contender in our countdown of extreme diggers may not come from the cavernous depths of the earth, but it really does emerge from the sand to strike at the unwary. Luckily it drags down not humans, but ants. This living quicksand was created by a creature that could have stepped straight out of the Star Trek movie, The Wrath of Khan. Meet the ant lion. When it grows, grows, this larva will look like a dragonfly. But until then, it's a digging machine. Its head and massive jaws catapult away large particles, and its spade-shaped abdomen plows backwards, creating a crater in the sand. It sits at the bottom of the hole, jaws open and ready, waiting for its first person. These ants are stepping through a minefield because there's no escape once you slide into a pit. First, the ant lion flicks up fine sand to keep the ants slipping back in a pit. It seizes its prey with those powerful jaws inject a poison to paralyze its victim. Then, the ant lion slowly pulls the ant on ant where it sucks the body dry. It makes you wonder what is buried below the sands. These guys are digging for an ancient Egyptian city. But this isn't Egypt. It's California, 
And these ruins weren't covered by the sands of time. They were buried by a movie maker. Cecil B. DeMille actually made two versions of his epic film, The Ten Commandments. The most famous is the second full-color version. The original was made in 1923 as a silent movie, yet its sets were just as elaborate. DeMille built a city of life-size buildings and more than 20 sphinxes, each standing 10 meters high. It was, at the time, the largest and most expensive movie ever made. Which is why, in an effort to save money, DeMille didn't remove the sets at the end of filming. Instead, he buried them in the desert. Eighty years later, a cryptic clue in DeMille's autobiography has led determined fans to the site of the original epic. But the sets are still proving hard to find. It's much easier to locate the remains of the Antlion's epic construction simply because it doesn't bury its treasure. It flicks the lifeless carcass out of the pit before sinking back into its burrow to wait for another victim to enter its jaws of death. If you thought that buried bugs and head-banging birds were eccentric excavators, just wait till you meet a singing bachelor who lures females into his tunnel of love. And later, we'll dig up a story about a man who just loves collecting holes. The next contender in our countdown of extreme diggers has a head like a jackhammer. Only it doesn't dig into concrete, but trees. Banging its way through to number seven in the countdown is the woodpecker. All 214 species peck wood. Their life is spent digging holes for food, shelter, and communication. Some species bash their beak against a tree 20 times a second and up to 12,000 times a day. Imagine if we were like a woodpecker and repeatedly beat our head against a wall at speeds of 7 meters per second. All that hammering would give us a headache unless we had the woodpecker's custom-built skull. In addition to a chisel-like beak, we'd have special shock-absorbing systems hidden inside the head. Brains are usually surrounded by lots of fluid, but the skull of a woodpecker is a tight fit, reducing the wobbling that causes concussions. A cushion of spongy bone at the base of the beak provides extra padding, and believe it or not, so does the woodpecker's incredible tongue. It can extend three times the length of its beak, Instead of being anchored in the back of the mouth, the tongue is attached to the nostril and stretches right around the skull. It acts as even more padding, so that the woodpecker ends up wearing a built-in crash helmet. With a head like a woodpecker, bashing your face against a brick wall would be no trouble. Woodpeckers are so good at digging into trees that their holes are a common sight in people's backyards. But one man has their holes in his living room. J. Henry Ballman from Indiana collects holes. Hundreds of holes. And it all started with a woodpecker. I was out helping to clean up some a little plot that we were going to make into a picnic ground. And I saw a little 
a dead tree there with a woodpecker hole in it. So I cut it down and brought it home. Now Henry has so many holes, he needs a bigger living room. And there's no shortage of new ones to collect, especially if you hang around an acorn woodpecker. This prolific pecker lives in the forests of the American West. It's called an acorn woodpecker because it collects vast numbers of the nuts to store for winter. Every acorn gets its very own individual storage hole. Each woodpecker family stores its acorns in one particular tree. And this means a lot of digging, because they can accumulate a total of 60,000 acorns. Woodpeckers definitely do a lot of digging. They're number seven in the countdown because they dig far more than just a simple cavity to store an acorn. They chisel out huge hollow chambers to rear their babies, and even use the noise of their digging to attract mates and ward off rivals. It seems that nothing digs wood better than a woodpecker. Our next contender can be found out on the American prairie where it goes hunting for ground squirrels. The only trouble is, at the first sign of danger, ground squirrels go to ground. But that won't stop the animal lumbering in to number six in the countdown, the badger. It may not win any medals for running, but unfortunately for ground squirrels, the badger is a champion digger. It powers through soil thanks to huge shovel-shaped paws with long claws for ripping through dirt. You can see a similar design in another digging machine working on the North American prairie. This is the biggest single digging bucket in the world. Just like a badger's paw, it powers through surface soil to expose the open cast coal seam. Each scoop of the drag line digger lifts the equivalent weight of 1,000 people. While a badger can't compete with a dragline digger, it's said to be more than a match for a human with a spade. After all, they get plenty of practice because they spend a lot of time underground. The badger is number six in the countdown because it constructs a sprawling complex of tunnels. This is the first contender that's connected lots of different burrows together joining grass-lined bedding chambers with multiple exits to use as escape routes. Which is why in World War II, the guys at this POW camp would have loved to have had a badger as a pet. There will be no escape from this camp. But these prisoners had an audacious plan. We're going to devote our energies to sports and gardening, all the cultural pursuits. And meanwhile, we dig. In the spring of 1943, the Allied prisoners began to tunnel for freedom. How many are you taking out? 250. 250? This real-life Great Escape required three tunnels, codenamed Tom, Dick, and the longest tunnel, Harry, which was the length of a football field. It began under a stove in a bunkhouse and dropped nine meters straight down. It was
was a claustrophobic's worst nightmare, according to XPOW, Alan Bryant. The really dangerous work was the actual tunneling. It was an absolute death ticket, because if there was a serious fall there, they were entombed in the tunnel. The size of the tunnel was two feet square, and uh, we had what we called a railway, which was a little trolley, which was about five inches above the ground. It was extremely claustrophobic, undoubtedly the most claustrophobic situation I've ever been in in my life. It was terrible. It took a year to complete, but on March 24, 1944, 76 prisoners used Harry to make their great escape. A badger could dig the same tunnel in a matter of hours. Faced with a hungry wolf or cougar, this escape artist is said to be able to completely bury itself in just one minute. There are even stories of badgers emerging from holes they've excavated through blacktop pavement and five centimeter thick concrete. No ordinary prison camp could detain this extreme digger. Our last two contenders have shown that there's much more to digging than just making a hole in the ground. And coming up, we'll discover why these guys once thought that they were surrounded by giant pink snakes. And later, why would anyone want to plant a garden deep underground? The next contender in our countdown of extreme excavators really digs underground music. He's a burrowing bachelor who attracts females by broadcasting his own tunes from his personal stereo system. And while his music is easy to hear, this reclusive DJ lives alone in a network of interconnected tunnels and seldom appears on the surface. The mysterious MC at number five in the countdown is the Mole Cricket. He's a tiny bulldozer, powering through the soil with a shovel-shaped head and huge front legs. Most of the time, he's happy feeding on the roots of grasses. But living in a tunnel can make it hard to find a mate. And that's why the mole cricket starts to sing. By rubbing his wing covers together, he can send out a plaintive love song. But when you're a small cricket surrounded by lots of soil, the music is quickly muffled. What he needs is an amplifier to really pump up the volume. So, he builds himself the insect equivalent of an old-time phonograph player. That big brass funnel amplifies the sounds made by the needle on the record. The male mole cricket is number five in the countdown because he builds himself an amplifier made of earth. At the entrance to a tunnel, the male digs a big funnel-shaped hollow. By carefully positioning himself at the base of this horn, his song is so well amplified that it can be heard one and a half kilometers away. However, sometimes these underground DJs can be too successful. If his souped-up song does attract a female, there's a good chance that after mating, the much bigger female will kick him out of his burrow. In the divorce, she gets the house and the stereo system. But at least he keeps the music. Because while both sexes can dig, only the male sings while excavating his underground home.
When it comes to digging in Africa's Kalahari Desert, our next contender leaves the others in the dust. Meet the meerkat. It's a kind of mongoose that only needs half an hour to excavate a hole ten times its own size. Meerkats dig to find food and to create complex underground networks. There can be 40 individuals in a single family group, which can have 15 of these dens in their territory. That's an awful lot of tunnels. One family may have 70 separate entrances into a tunnel system that contains chambers for nurseries, bedrooms, pantries, bathrooms, even multiple emergency exits. This twisted neighborhood of tunnels makes perfect sense when you live in a desert. To avoid the searing heat of the Kalahari, the meerkats just have to head underground, where inside the burrow, the temperatures can be 15 degrees cooler. But meerkats are not the only ones to have headed underground to avoid the heat. In California, one man excavated these underground chambers by hand. He was the human equivalent of a meerkat, according to Andre Forestiere. This is the home of a man named Baldassare Forestiere, who was my great uncle. Uh, a young immigrant from the island of Sicily who by the time he was in his mid-twenties had made his way to the center of California and bought this land to be a farmer and his expectation was to plant orchards and vineyards and to produce fruit and what he didn't realize at the time is he had bought some of the worst farmland in California it's filled thick with a cemented soil layer that we call hard pan and it's several feet thick and it's so thick that tree roots tend not to go through it uh, it doesn't drain very well and today it would take big equipment to rip it apart and to relevel it in order to plant into it. And that was well beyond his means for the time. In the first summer out here, he started to build a little cellar next to his home. And it was a way of enduring the heat that we have out here in July and August. And it was from that cellar that he has this idea of expanding further into the earth to create a dwelling that could be used out here every summer. And he started working on it and he never stopped. He worked on it for 40 years and by the end of the 40 years it wasn't a small cellar anymore but it was a large complex labyrinth that became his home here in the valley and he called it in Italian his Giardini Sutorani, his underground gardens. While people still use this complex of tunnels and chambers to avoid the heat, at least they don't have to use it for defense, unlike a meerkat. Africa is full of predators that see meerkats as a tasty treat. So at the entrance to each burrow was a dirt mound to give sentries the best vantage point to spot danger. these extreme diggers, it seems that their underground home really is their castle. So far we've seen animals excavate underground fortresses and surround sound stereo systems. But still to come is an ancient digger that was so precious that if you stole one, you'd lose a limb. And later, We'll meet the animal excavation experts that inspire modern architects.
The next contender in our countdown of extreme excavators was once a big hit on the fertile banks of the Nile River. Today we tend to ignore this humble digger, but in ancient Egypt, Queen Cleopatra made it a sacred animal. And the penalty for smuggling this slippery customer was to have your hands cut off. This holy ground gobbler is, of course, the earthworm. It's number three in the countdown because it spends its life digging a network of tunnels through the soil that can sometimes extend three and a half meters below the surface. An earthworm doesn't so much dig as eat its way through the dirt, digesting decaying plant material along the way. In some places, you can find two and a half million worms per hectare. That's enough to turn over 40 tons of soil in a year. They are the greatest soil-making machines on the planet. And yet most of the time, we ignore them completely. Except in Australia. Here, they've built a big pink worm museum to honor these kings of compost. But this 150-meter concrete worm isn't the only giant in the area. The Gippsland giant earthworm can be four and a half meters long. When the area was settled 200 years ago, the early farmers found what they thought were strange pink snakes. Even though the worms lived deep underground, it was easy to know when they were around, if you knew what to listen for. As curator of the Giant Earthworm Museum, John Matthews explains. One of the most unusual aspects of going searching for a giant Gippsland earthworm out in the field, out in the wild, is actually discovering the habitat. We look for the worm holes, and as we approach the worm holes, for the unsuspecting, the people that we're taking out there for the first time, all of a sudden there's this gurgling sound that comes out of the ground. And it'd be frightening to some people that they wonder what is going on. We can actually hear the gurgling above the ground. It sounds like a country toilet flushing. The gurgle is simply the sound of the worm pushing through the groundwater that has accumulated in its enormous tunnel. This is one extreme digger that would be much more than a mouthful for our next contender. Sometimes you have to feel sorry for poor old earthworms. Because they're no match for a mole. It's number two in the countdown because this insectivore spends its entire life patrolling a maze of intertwined underground tunnels that can extend more than 45 meters in various depths. It's an incredibly efficient digger. A mole weighing little more than 100 grams can shift four and a half kilograms of earth in 20 minutes. That would be like an 80 kilogram miner moving four tons of dirt. And there's one mole that's even strong enough to break through solid rock. It's just that this mole weighs in at 700 tons. And it's capable of digging a tunnel long enough to connect England to France. Meet a mechanical mole. The nickname for a TBM, or tunnel boring machine. The mole first appeared during the construction of the London subway in 1955 and has gone on to work all around the world, including during the digging of the channel, 
over 40 meters beneath the English Channel. A mechanical mole is a huge cylinder spanning the length of two football fields. At the front is the cutter head, a huge wheel covered in tungsten teeth that chews through rock at a rate of four and a half meters per hour. Enormous hydraulic rams hold the mole in place as it excretes spoil on long conveyor belts. But unlike a real mole's burrow, the machine-made tunnel needed to be reinforced with nearly 700,000 concrete semicircles to make it safe from collapse. It took seven years before the 11 mechanical moles and 15,000 humans digging from both sides of the channel met in the middle. Thanks to these extreme diggers, the 50-kilometer trip under the sea floor now takes just 35 minutes. A real mole doesn't move quite that fast, but thanks to those powerful forelegs and claws, it almost seems to swim through the soil. The only time it comes to the surface is to clean out dirt from its deepest tunnels. But not even this extreme digger can compete with the animal at number one in the countdown, which is more than capable of making a molehill into a mountain. We've seen the nine contenders. They're the best of the best. Only one animal is a more extreme digging machine. The search for the most extreme digger in the countdown begins in New York City because there's one animal that also creates massive skyscrapers. And while this extreme engineering is impressive, we tend to forget that there's an unseen metropolis underground, a winding labyrinth of subways, tunnels, and sewers. In New York, Urban miners have been working below Manhattan for more than a century. Today, they use all kinds of complicated technology and computer-assisted designs. However, the animal that's carved out its place at number one in the countdown has no tools except its mouth. Its brain is smaller than a pinhead, and it's completely blind. The most extreme digger in the countdown is the termite. In Africa, these insects excavate an underground metropolis for five million individuals. There's no shortage of workers to help construct their massive home because their queen can give birth every 15 seconds. And they need all the help they can get because for termites, digging is a very messy business. Once they've excavated soil, they turn it into a building material by chewing it up with a mixture of saliva and dung. It may not be pretty, but this plaster sets like concrete and can be molded into a variety of different architectural features like gardens, covered walkways, and nurseries. It's an extraordinarily complicated subterranean metropolis. But just like New York City, its most impressive features are above ground. Each year, a single colony can dig up to 1,800 kilograms of soil and mold it into a tower that can stand taller than a giraffe. 
If termites were scaled up to our size, they'd make a skyscraper four times the height of the Empire State Building. And just like a human construction, the termite mound comes complete with its own ventilation system. Since the millions of workers all live in the basement, things can get really hot and stuffy. But this is where those tall chimney pots come into action. As hot air flows out the top of the mound, cooler air is sucked in through side vents and sinks down through ventilation shafts to the basement. This clever design keeps the interior of the mound at a comfortable 30 degrees. It's the perfect air conditioning system, and it doesn't require any electricity. No wonder human architects have been taking a close look at termite mounds. And in Africa, they've even tried to copy the design. Skyscrapers in Zimbabwe's capital city, Harare, face the same harsh conditions as the termite constructions. But this building uses only half the energy of a normal office block, because it's been built like a termite mound. As air in the building warms, it rises and escapes through rows of chimneys working as the equivalent of the termite towers. Thanks to clever design, the company saves a fortune in building costs and maintenance. It's a staggering piece of engineering, considering that these towers of dirt were manufactured by a blind bug with a brain smaller than a pinhead. However, just like New York City, there's just as much construction beneath the surface. Termites have been recorded digging down nearly 40 meters to connect with an underground water supply. And that's why, when it comes to digging, there can be no doubt that the termite really is the most extreme.